Following the establishment of the 13th Amendment, which abolished slavery, African Americans did not have immediate gratification with equal rights as whites. Throughout history, African Americans have fought for equality in many areas, including voting, housing, jobs, and much more. A prevalent issue that is still present today is the inequality of education facilities, along with the quality and funding of these schools. In 1868, the 14th Amendment was written to identify people born in the United States and people who are naturalized as citizens. This citizenship promised protection and equality under the law. Despite this addition to the Bill of Rights, most states ignore the ruling as a whole, so African Americans remained unequal and virtually unfree. As time passed, many African Americans struggled to rise up in society because they were not given the same educational opportunities. James Milton turned Turner, a former slave and educated man, decided to take matters into his own hands when Missouri refused to fund black schools. His stand gave inspiration for African-American schools all over the country, which ultimately resulted in more opportunities for the African-American population. Despite this growth for equality, James Milton Turner's fight did not eliminate all education disparities between whites and blacks in public education. Today, the government tends to spend a greater amount of money funding the white majority suburban schools rather than the inner city black majority schools. Much later in American history, in 1954, the court ruling in the Brown v. Board of Education of Topeka directly opposed the Plessy v. Ferguson ruling. Plessy v. Ferguson made segregation legal as long as the separate facilities were equal in quality. Brown v. Board, however, reevaluated this this legality in terms of education and came to the conclusion that segregated schools were not equal. This was mainly due to the low amount of funding in black schools, which resulted in less resources and opportunities for students. With the realization, Brown v. Board of Education ruling segregating unconstitutional, which ultimately led to the forced desegregation of schools. Following Brown v. Board, Little Rock Central High School in Topeka, Kansas, was forced to desegregate with the Little Rock Nine, despite their government's opposition. Other schools nationwide follow suit. This court ruling is still prevalent today because it ultimately changed the nation's educational system forever by uniting it. Little Rock Central's op opposition to the desegregation resulted in another court case. The Little Rock School District versus Lorraine jo Joshua forced desegregation due to racial disparities and e inequalities in school facilities within the Little Rock School District North Little Rock School District, and Pulaski County School District. A direct cause of this court case was the Little Rock Nine. The Little Rock Nine was a group of nine African-American students that tried to attend an all-white school. Orville Faubus, the governor of Arkansas, ordered the National Guard to block the Little Rock Nine from entering the school. The Little Rock School District and Joshua Interveners filed a lawsuit claiming that the segregation practices were present through the three school districts. The actions of the government did contribute to the cause of this case. African Americans were frustrated when Fabus tried to block the Little Rock Nine from entering an all-white school. When a temporary law was put into place against segregation, the lower court tried to terminate it, and they succeeded. The termina termination of this case showed more frustration in the African American community because none of these inequalities were being fixed. The lower court's ability to terminate this court ruling goes to show that today, the federal government does not play a big enough role in protecting minority rights. This results in African American movements to this day. An inequality in the funding between different schools was a major issue and angered many people. One court case that dealt with this issue was Abbott v. Burke. This case was first filed as Robinson v. Cahill in 1970, which the court's order for sufficient funding led to the legislator to enact New Jersey's first income tax to help fund the state's poorest schools, but was later filed under the well-known name of Abbott v. Burke in 1981. The original case action suit was filed on behalf of 20 families from Camden, East Orange, Irvington, and Jersey City. This, state, this case focused on the constitutionality of the state's method of public school funding. The first Abbott v. Burke ruling 
found that urban children received inadequate f education funding in order that they must be given an education whose quality equals what students in the state's wealthiest district receive. Abbott remains as the centerpiece of how the state funds its urban versus suburban schools. Today, educational inequality is still a very relevant issue. Most states give more funding to white majority suburban schools, despite the fact that these schools have more taxes flowing into their educational systems from the rich res residents. The interstate schools, on the other hand, generally have a black majority with lower income families but do not receive the necessary funding. It is virtually impossible for these poor inner city schools to recover from low funding due to the residents' relatively low income. This disparity between inner city and suburban funding causes other problems and differences in these educational systems. For example, a study in 2009 found that suburban schools have an average high school rate school graduation rate of 75.3% compared to city's high school graduation rate of 60.9%. The students that do not graduate further the despair in these poor areas because they do not get the education necessary to get a well-paying job. This overall vicious cycle has been present for years in our country. The underfunding and support of urban black schools can actually be related directly to the civil rights issue that were discussed earlier in this documentary. Throughout the nation's history, the education of African Americans have not been promoted or supported. In the past, Missouri would not fund black schools, so James Milton Turner had to start black schools in the state. Following the Brown vs. Board of Education of Topeka, Little Rock Central High School refused to desegregate peacefully which resulted in the Little Rock School District versus Lorraine Joshua court case. Beyond this, there are many other cases that have led up to today's issues, which can be represented through the Abbott versus Burke case. But how do we address this ever-present issue? A possible solution to help less fortunate schools is to unify public schools and get rid of private schools. In Lake Providence, most rich kids go to private schools and the poor kids go to public schools. The richer families have no reason to put additional money or resources into the public schools because their children do not go there. In Lake Providence, Briarfield Academy is a private school that most wealthier people go to. It is stated that if they do, did not have this private school, the public schools would benefit. If the wealthier kids went to public schools, then their parents would be more willing to donate money and give public schools more money. Another possible solution is to not base the funding of schools off of taxes. Wealthier people live in bigger houses and spend more money, which means that there are more taxes. If school funding is based off taxes, then the areas with wealthier people will have more funding than poorer areas. The schools needed to have equal funding through poor and rich areas so funding schools by taxes is not an efficient way to achieve equality between schools. Lastly, more fortunate people should donate to the less fortunate. If more fortunate people give a little to the less fortunate, then it can help them be more successful and ultimately give them the support that they need while they work and earn money. With this little support to the less fortunate, it gives them more opportunity to earn money, which could help give the schools more money in the end.